Hey everyone, we're back down by the Bitterroot River, which is where I've spent a lot of time in the past week or so. And I've got a 20 by 24, I think, and I'm gonna do a demo. Um, have a little microphone on, talk my way through the process, and I'm gonna give myself like 30 minutes, see what can happen on this painting. We got a little bit of snow overnight, and then it's just kind of continued lightly snowing all day long. So it's like barely snowing right now, but it's not enough to really affect me. It's not gonna really like build up on my palette or anything. Um, and I've been painting a lot of scenes right on the river with a lot of water in it. Uh, so I'm gonna go with something kind of similar. I'll show you a little better in a second, but we're gonna go for something straight across to over here. And uh, I love these kind of funky trees, like this one, and um, I love these two over here. So we're gonna find some way to compose that over there back and then get the water coming to us. Uh, and maybe a little bit of the, the rocks and stuff right in front of me. Some people think I'm crazy out here in the winter in the snow painting, but who's really crazy is this guy. He's out here fly fishing. He's standing in the cold water. That guy's crazy. <laughs> All right, so this is the scene we're gonna go for, and we're probably gonna crop it like right here and here or so. I'm not, I'm not sure, as I start laying it in, I'll figure out right where everything's gonna be. But I love the, the distance we're getting with this uh, hazy, you know, snowy weather. There's actually big, big mountains, mountains that would go off the screen right here, but, um, but you can't see them at all. So it's this nice hazy, get this nice kind of grayed out blue distant tree line with these darker trees popping off in front of it and then you got the dark bank splash of snow right here and then the reflection and maybe maybe the water will go right off the bottom of the canvas or I might I'll probably get a little bit of line of this kind of warmth down here that are these rocks um, but the the but the exciting part of the painting is going to be these trees kind of popping off against this kind of gray foggy atmospheric stuff and then the play in the water so let's try it out so i'm starting out with this is a brush we have a local you know office supply store that has has some art supplies and i just grabbed these are like 99 cent brushes um, and that's what i'm starting out with so i need to decide how far where my water is going to start and i'm thinking so halfway is what I've got here. I'm going to try to pull the bank on the other side down below halfway. So about here and then I think I'll just pull the water. I don't normally I don't normally like to have something has reflections in water go right off the bottom of the canvas. I like for usually there to be a foreground element like the rocks, but the way I'm seeing this right now it looks like the water will go right off the page which I'm okay, I'm okay trying that and seeing what happens. All right, let's not dilly-dally too long. So I'm not, I said 30 minutes, I'm not necessarily gonna like, you know, set a timer or something. I'm just gonna paint and gonna see what happens. All right, so my, that patch of snow is gonna be right there. Some stuff, uh, tree trunks and whatnot. There, come across. There's a pile of trees stuff right here. All right. All right, let's put 
this tree on the left. It's kind of leaning, leaning to the left a little bit. There's a patch, a patch here. These trees here over to a tree with kind of the stubby top here. The one next to it has a nice curve on the top of it. Some trees behind it. Okay. And then that distant tree line. You know, something like something like that. There's a tree kind of coming in from the side right there. And then in the water, I'm going to hint at the darks, the reflections in the water. I'm going to go kind of wet, dip into my turp. that. I'm going to go straight for this distant haze. It's, it's blue. It's very bluish. It's very cool. So I do have a black here. I'll tell you my colors real quick. Uh, cad yellow light, uh, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, uh, purple, some kind of purple. Um, Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, celestial blue, it's basically like a cerulean, and I do have black. And then this is just a pile of, of leftovers from different painting sessions. Um, so I'm squinting. This is kind of a bluish, I have a little bit of black in this with some blue. And it's, I think that's going to work perfect. And in my work, I'm looking for a variety of application a variety of strokes. I want thick, I want thin, I want wet. Let's see how much variety I can pull out of the landscape. Okay, I'm gonna go for the sky. I'm just gonna judge the sky off of this. Um, it's much lighter, but the lightest thing in the painting is going to be this snow. So let's just say the snow is this kind of dirty, dirty paint next to this blue. Let's say the snow is going to be pretty close to straight white, something like that. Then we know that the sky has to be darker than this and has to be lighter than this. adjust it some, but I'm about to paint the, the darks of the trees. Um, when I started out painting and when I was studying, this is a good example of, of uh, if I'm teaching versus if I'm just painting a demo like this. I'm not, when I'm painting a demo, I'm, I'm not thinking right now what's the best practice for like a student or for a beginner. I'm thinking that I want to do quick painting, show you my process, but if I was teaching, I would be saying that we would probably go dark to light. <laughs> um, that's kind of how I learned. It's a, it's a nice process, but that's not what I'm doing right now. All right, let's go for those trees. Some burnt umber, but it's, it's not that dark. It is warm. Um, just dip into my pile here. It's kind of a grayish. Let's see, where do we want it? Right 
here. There's a couple of trunks in there. This one over here seems appears much darker. Maybe um, it is a different kind of tree, and it's kind of all by itself, singled out against the horizon. And then the uh, the branches against the sky are are pretty warm. They're not cool at all, um, which is definitely something that drew me to the scene. I don't want to exaggerate it too much. That's way too red. Yeah, let's try that. This one right off the page. And I'm just shifting, shifting that pile different directions. There's a nice branch that pops up right here. That is probably likely be a bad place to put something like that. Um, so dark popping off of there. So I'm going to avoid it for now. A few. This is a this is a brush someone gave me for Christmas. It's a nice thin round. Um, I've covered up the brush, so I can't tell you exactly what it is. But I've enjoyed I've enjoyed having it. Again, um, if I were teaching right now, I keep thinking of things like if I was like a teacher in this scenario, I'd be saying not to do this, is not to be getting, uh, jump into too many details too quickly in the painting because I kind of want to make sure everything is developing in the way you want it to before you spend too much time on little things. Hold on. Hey. Okay, um, I think I was saying something about if you find yourself uh, developing too many details early on and you're not, and then you realize later you're not happy with, I don't know, the placement or, or maybe they don't, they don't fit very well into relationship with everything else, then don't do as I'm doing now and hold off on some of those details until you build up a few other things. Um, there's a tree, I don't know that this tree, there's like a little stubby tree down there. I don't know that it's in my composition exactly, but I'm looking over there and I like it. So I'm gonna put it there. And then this line right here, kind of, there's like a, almost like a horizon line right there that's nice and warm. It's warm against, against that background. So I'm gonna grab that one too. If you watch, if you've watched several of my videos, you'll you've heard me in a different video saying that um, I ran out of small tubes of yellow ochre a while back, and I just have a big can of it. And I keep thinking I'll use that can before I buy any more, and instead I just haven't been using it at all. So yellow ochre has kind of left itself in my palette because that is essentially yellow ochre. 
but I'm just mixing it with my yellow and my brown. But I'm sure, I'm sure it will resurface again one day. And then there's uh, this area down here is just, it's obstructed by a lot of different things, but it's just mainly kind of dark. Um, and then right next to this water, I mean right next to this snow and water, it goes pretty dark. Make sure it goes dark enough. I'm sure the fly fisherman's not enjoying my jab, if he can hear me. those distant trees and there's you can make out a couple of trunks just hint at a few So I, I bought some uh, toe warmers and the lady at the store said, have you ever put them on top of your feet? Because the directions say put them on the bottom of your feet. She said they work way better on top of your feet. And I would have to disagree. The top of my feet are nice and cozy, but the bottom of my feet are cold. I wonder if the fly fisherman has on toe warmers. and just that that tree line got a little a little static and static elements in your painting will kill your painting and there's nothing there's absolutely nothing static about nature so I always try to be mindful of that Is this line right here it's was probably supposed to be that tree but that tree has moved over there are some branches kind of coming over these reflections and then definitely address this tree right here so I'm squinting the reflections are not super bright they're like I said earlier they're darker than the snow they're darker than the sky so that's kind of a nice guide guiding reference dip into my turp cup. I think that can work.
the reflection right next to the water is reflecting that snow. <laughs> Let me get some fresh white. Reflection. Let's see. Just kind of moving around, looking at the looking at that reflection and where. It, there's something, okay, there's some little bitty, little bitty things sticking up right there that are gonna, that are causing a reflection. So I'm gonna put the reflection in there and I'll come back and put them in there in a minute. If I remember. It's the thing about being outside is there's so many little things. Often I get home and realize, oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna do that. reflection right between these two. It's, I guess it's, it's not quite as prominent as, as these. It's not as bright as this. It's kind of right. It's a little more prominent than that. And then again, separates up here a little bit. Pretty prominent. It's funny, there's two that are kind of at a V. This one's kind of coming this way. And there's another one here. And the landscape's too kind of stretched out on me. Just need to bring this snow over some more. dark log running this way. It's got snow on it. Snow sprinkled through here. A patch of snow in the water. It's actually over here. Yeah, so the 
this, this big patch of snow can still come over a little further to maybe stretches to here. nice dark where that water meets the snow. And then there's that reflection of the snow down into the water. This isn't so much, these aren't so much reflections, it's just water catching, catching some light. this reflection and of course I always say this in these demos there's that like image and reference for you to look at um, and of course if I was looking at that reference I'd have this perfectly clear image of the landscape but I'm looking at the craziness of the whole thing um, and that's where it becomes more of an interpretation um, than than a copy. Um, I want it to feel like nature, but it, uh, the chances of it feeling like that photo um, it's of course not, not what I'm going for, it's not what I achieve either. the snow was going to stop and uh, it's just continued coming around down. All right, let's address this tree here. It's, um, it's dark, almost silhouetted against the background. I do always like to give a, a solid nod to, the, to that tree. Um, not that, like I'm saying, it's not going to be the perfect representation of that tree, but that it, it has some of the characteristics, some of the feeling of that tree. That's what, that's what drew it to me in the first place, and I always want to try, attempt and capture some of that. Back 
to this tree. Using the same small brush, and go back and through, just break up some of those clumps. Just studying. It's like a general generalized study. Here come the geese. Snow is picking up. Bring in some of the distant, that distant uh, tree line.
squinting, squinting a lot, judging, judging the shapes, judging value. Right now, I'm really just judging shape, squinting, looking at that tree. on me. I'm gonna have to call this one quits pretty soon. Let's see if we can obstruct some of this reflection a little bit. Even in the light spots there's you know bits of, of water catching a reflection of something dark. There's these that I didn't put in. Let's just uh, throw some some little things in right here. Squinting, I my eyes coming to this light spot of the canvas. So, with this small brush and some turp, I'm just gonna knock it down just a little bit. Knock down some of these spots that are just catching my attention. thing I'm going to do is just pop that white again. Going straight white. My brush is dirty. It's going to not be completely clean. That's okay with me. Always okay to throw something down and then make adjustments. It's not, I mean, that's, that's what painting is. Put some of that, grab a little bit of that white down here in the reflection. It's pretty wet, so I'm having trouble coming back across some of that. And there's just a couple of hints of snow.
it's actually not reflected so much, but as I'm squinting, it just, this reflection feels like it's not weighted properly. So, just a little bit. Mimic some of the things that are happening up there. And then this reflection goes this way, and it will always go the opposite. So let's push it over just a little bit. Okay, gotta stop. <laughs> All right. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Thanks for watching.